and there are others that are involved. Um, the conversation about villages is really all about enhancing the quality of life and well-being of individuals in our communities as they're aging in place. It's about engagement and it's about connection. And so as we think about that, the concept of villages is, is across the nation and there are hundreds of villages across the nation. They are typically grassroots organizations. They're about neighbors helping neighbors and networking of community organizations. Some villages more so and some villages less so, but we are wildly interested in the concept and in the work of, of networking together. Why? Because here in this region, we have so much already. We are rich with resources and two, a village concept can create, given all of what's going on in our environment and as time goes by and as we evolve, connective tissue to make our services better network and stronger so that people can live in their homes as long as possible. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn this program over to Josephine and she's going to give us some background because she is our, um, she is our captain of the ship. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So um, Good morning. let's start with, if you will, um, there's several folks that have their video off, which is fine, but we're gonna take a picture of everyone. And so if you are willing, we'd love for you to turn your camera on for the moment so that we can capture a picture of everybody as we begin. Josephine, this is Michael. Um, I'm on my desktop and it unfortunately does not have a camera. I left my laptop, so I didn't bring it this morning, so I apologize. No, no, it's completely okay. So I'm going to give, I'm going to take two photos so that I don't mess anything up. I'll have a backup and um, I'll say smile and hold, then I'll take the picture, I'll say relax, and then I'll do it one more time and we'll just get through it quickly. All right, give me one second to prepare. Holding on. Okay, wait, don't smile yet. I'm not. Take you to smile, right? You're smiling okay. all the time, Josephine. Here we go. One, two, three. All right, one more time. Give me a second. Whoops, I mean, I took it without telling you. Okay, here we go, one more time. Smile big. Perfect, okay, that's it. So now let's go over a couple of the housekeeping. Um, everybody uh, should be on mute if you're not contributing to the conversation so that there's no background disturbances. Um, just to let you know, the session is being recorded and so you will be, um, the, some of your video will be shown on the recording and we'll send you a PowerPoint. Was there a question? No. We'll send you a PowerPoint at the end of the session with the post survey so you don't have to take tons of notes. We'll be sending you all the information in the PowerPoint. And if you will, let me make sure, if you could, when you scroll through the top of your box, you see three dots. If you guys will change your name, it says rename. If you'll put your name and your organization, that's so helpful for everyone to get to know, like a quick networking kind of tool to get to know who you are. So like right now, my name just says Josephine Eisenberg. So I'm gonna add the Patterson Foundation. So there's three dots if you don't know how to do it. You click those three dots and it should give you an option to rename yourself. And if you have any um, questions throughout, the chat box is at the bottom. You click that and you can type in your questions and we'll be calling on you also by raising your hand. I think that's it. If you have any questions, just chat me and I'll help you out the best I can. And thanks for being here. You're on mute, Deborah. Note to self, unmute before we speak. So thank you, Josephine. I just want to, again, welcome everyone. And um, Josephine, I think we're ready to go over to the slides.
All right. So this is all about reinventing and reimagining. And today's team that we have uh, presenting or a part of the team, myself, Deborah Govro, I'm a condo resident here in Sarasota, and I'm an initiative consultant with the Patterson Foundation. The Patterson Foundation supports the work of the launching and uh, success of uh, this village and villages around the region. Also, we have Sue Firestone Berger, who is Aging Systems Policy Coordinator with the Sarasota County Health and Human Services. Further, we have Joe Shapiro with us. Joe is, Joel is uh, an individual who's got a lot of experience in vi villages. We locally, um, you know, we're newbies in all of this and Joel has uh, years of experience. He's been on the Village to Village Network Board, the national board of all of the villages for the past six years. He is helping tech companies with business acceleration. And he is here as a, a resource for us because he is across the nation helping villages uh, strengthen themselves to be able to create strategic partnerships and really do better and um, have a more sustainable base. Um, go ahead and move to the next slide, Josephine. Our agenda for our time today is just three simple points, updates and next steps to creating a village. And it's weighted heavy on item number one on next steps to creating a village. The last time we spoke, uh, most of us on the call were on a previous call. We talked a lot about what villages are and we want to talk more about that here, but what we're looking for is more of a conversation, which is agenda item number two. What are your interests and aspirations? And then last, we wanna share some ways to participate and collaborate together. And you can go ahead and move to the next slide, Josephine. All of you in the email that Josephine sent out yesterday, received a, um, an attachment, which was called Be a Part of It. And this is in, in a way an invitation, but also is an overview of some of the material we'll touch on later on in, the, um, in our time today. So almost nothing that is presented on the slides is not already in your hands and in your possession. We'll send it to you again in a follow-up message, but I just want to let you know some of the slides are dense with copy, but really you've got it all already. So there are three major tasks ahead for the village as we're looking at it. One is to develop infrastructure and that's expanding our exploratory team. We have a small group now and we want to expand that and we'll talk more about what that looks like develop a community connections team, which if you're not interested in being on the exploratory team, uh, the community connections team is a place for everybody. Sue will talk more about this later. We want to establish support teams, back office, um, a back office, policies, programs, and procedures. And number two, we want to create strategic relationships. A major activity with many villages just work from uh, their own, um, you know, they attract members, they attract volunteers, and the members and volunteers propel the work themselves. Our concept is we have strategic relationships within the community so that we really strengthen what you're doing, what we're doing, and the community benefits all the way around, and to really advance and strengthen what is already richly available. And the third task is inviting and attracting volunteers and potential members. So um, with this, we are about to move into the sharing part. And in order to begin the sharing, what I wanna do is invite everybody that is present to say their name. So everybody can come off of mute for a moment. Just your name and your organization. So here's my philosophy that when people um, we're about to engage in conversation. Sometimes people are shy to do that. And once we have our voice in the room, it's a lot easier to get going. So um, uh, let's see, should I call in people or do you wanna just roll? Let's have you all roll. So who would like to start? And then everyone should just go ahead and chime in. Go ahead, Sarah. Uh, first of all, let's change me from Sarah to Sally. Yes. 
And uh, I am very, very interested in uh, participating in this meeting this morning because beginning in about my, uh, 2016, um, I chaired a, a committee to try to establish an aging at home on Bird Key. And uh, we worked very hard on developing resources in the community and uh, finally, and developing strategic relationships here and elsewhere in the country. And I was a member of the Village to Village um, team and, or a member of Village to Village. And Joel, we might have met <laughs> if you've been there uh, since 2016, I think we might have had some conversations on some of the, the obstacles that, that um, I was dealing with here. Uh, it was a new concept here in Sarasota, and uh, I'm probably maybe I'm going on a little too long, but uh, I was very enthusiastic about it, and uh, it just didn't work out. And um, then Carol Chrisman and Pamela, who are both on this call, um, came along, and they have picked up the mantle in uh, on Bird Key, and I hope that an aging at home uh, will eventually be realized. Very good. Thank you so much, Sally. And um, if thank you for all of your sharing. And we do want to hear all of the pieces. This moment, if you could all just name an organization, or if you don't have one, you could say, I'm interested. I'm just interested. Sorry. <laughs> or, or the geographic area that you're interested in. That would be great, too. Thank you, Sally, for your sharing. Go ahead. Who else wants to chime in? Yes, Susie. I'm Susie Brenner. I'm the executive director of the Paradise Center on Longboat Key. Excellent. Who else? Uh, Mary Harbor. I live in a condo building and I have been a member of the DuPont Circle Village in Washington, D.C. for 10 years. Uh, I'm still a member and um, uh, know what they have done, what the Washington region has done. I'm familiar with the Village to Village Network and I'm very excited that it looks like we will be starting a village here in Sarasota and I will help any way I can. Thank you, Mary. Again, name and organization. I want to keep it so that we can come back to everybody. Go ahead. Who's next? Go ahead. Hi, I'm, I'm Linda Williams and I'm with the Living in Community Network. It's a grassroots organization here in Sarasota. Okay, thank you. I'll go next. Hi, everybody. My name is Katie Scott. I'm with Jewish Family and Children's Service of the Sun Coast. I represent the Aging Services Department. Thank you. I'm Nancy Reed. I'm an interested participant. I'm a neighbor of Pierrette Kelly, who's with the Patterson Foundation. So that's how I got an invitation. Super. Kirk Volker, I'm a pulmonary critical care doc and director of clinical research at Sarasota Memorial with an interest in technology to help people uh, stay at home and uh, monitor wellness. So I'm very interested in this project. Thank you. Well, Sola Falk, I'm with Senior Friendship Center and uh, uh, part of the caregiving uh, team here at the Friendship Center. Welcome. We're Ellie and Mark Baldwin um, with Sunway Senior Living Concierge. Very good. Carol Chrisman with Compass Care Advisors uh, SRQ, along with Pam, <laughs> who's, raise your hand, Pam, <laughs> who are here, who's worked extensively with Sally, um, and we've worked here in the Sarasota community. Both of us are nurses by background. Excellent, welcome. Hi, I'm Jeanette Watling Mills, <clears throat> and I'm also with Living in. I'm also with Living in Community Network, and with Universal <clears throat> Design Coalition, which is geared towards um, safely aging in place modification. Mm -hmm. Super. Anyone else? Hi, I'm I'm Pam Miller Giacoma. I, Carol just referred to me, as did Sally. Mm -hmm. um, Compass Care Advisors SRQ, and as you heard, you know, very much involved in aging in place. So we're really very excited to be part of this. Super. Go ahead. Uh, Cynthia Kemp, and I'm just an interested party. Okay. 
Welcome, Cynthia. Emil Govro, interested party, Sarasota. And my husband. <laughs> who is smart and capable and retired. <laughs> uh -huh. a, lot, a lot of experience in nonprofits. Anyone else that hasn't introduced themselves? Joel, did you actually in introduce yourself? I, I didn't, but you did such a wonderful job. I, I just wanted to acknowledge, Sally, you're absolutely right. In fact, we spoke this time in 2017, mid, mid February. Uh, so you're absolutely right. We did talk. Sarasota has long been, I'm in Chicago, by the way. Uh, so it's a little bit cooler where I am. And I'll bet none of you had to go out shoveling snow this morning like I did. But uh, I'm very happy to be here with you all. I'm very excited. Sarasota has, not only have I vacationed in Sarasota over the years, I've long felt we, there was a tremendous opportunity and I'm just so excited to see what's, what is coming together now. So um, it, it's wonderful to be here with you all today. Thank you. And Michael, I saw your uh, screen lighting up. Yes, I'm, I'm Michael Fluker, Executive Director of Laurel Civic Association. Uh, I was invited by uh, Sue Firestone Berger, uh, Berger, and I'm interested in getting more information to disseminate uh, to the minority community and develop strategic partnerships. Okay, very good. I'm Laura Magnuson. I'm the Director of Rehab Services at Sarasota Memorial, and I'm also on the board for Senior Friendship Center. Welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so what I'd like to do now is just uh, ask, uh, you know, Emil, could you close the door between us because I can hear the echo, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd like to ask everybody, so the, the conversation that we began with here in the community, as I mentioned, is it began in Sarasota and really Mary Hopper, who's on the call and a founder of the uh, Sarasota Village concept, um, brought it forward. But what we notice, what we hear is that others in the community are interested in the potential of a village in their community. So if we could just have like a little raise of hands, uh, who's interested in a village in their community that's not downtown Sarasota? What other regions are, okay? So uh, uh, Susie Brenner, you're Longbow Key. Uh, Carol, you are uh, Bird Key. Um, who else raised their hand? Uh, yes, Nancy, you are Manatee. You're on mute. Northwest Bradenton. Northwest Bradenton. Anyone else? Yeah, so the path, yes, Jeanette. Jeanette, um, I'm in South Sarasota, Unity area. Okay, okay, perfect. So this is very exciting for the aspirations and intentions of the Patterson Foundation to really support a regional development of villages. That the idea is excellent is, is um, where the Patterson Foundation is coming from. We need to make it a reality. I mean, it needs to happen, not only in downtown Sarasota, but we're looking, so the Patterson Foundation is looking at supporting across the region so that there are uh, multiple villages and so that we're connected. Also, Barbara Shear and Amanda, I think Amanda, Amanda Evans is also here. These beautiful individuals are colleagues from Lee County. They are in the process now of exploring the possibility of a village as well. Lee County is not in the region that TPF um, typically works with, which is Sarasota, Manatee, DeSoto, and Charlotte counties. Uh, nonetheless, they are wonderful and beloved partners that we are working with on an ongoing basis and hope to continue to have a strong relationship as we move forward. So at this point, what I'd like to do is just move into a place where I'm being a lot quieter and hearing from you folks about what your interests are and what your aspirations are. Why are you on the call? What is it that your organization, particularly if we could start with organizations, is what is your organizational interest or what are your ideas with regard to a, a village um, 
in the community, region, whatever. Please, Susie. I just, I wanna start because I have to hop off and go teach a senior Zumba class. So, you know, I have a good excuse. Um, so the Paradise Center is basically a community center on Longboat Key, but our average age is 70. So we are a de facto senior center mm -hmm. and we do operate year round, which is unique on Longboat Key. Um, so we're already doing a lot of this stuff. And so, uh, and I was in Washington DC for 26 years. So I was very aware of all the villages there. Um, and was really excited when I got invited to do this because I think we're already doing a lot of this on Longboat, um, but it only makes sense for us to be kind of one of the spokes. Of, uh, if, if Sarasota Villages is the hub, we're one of the, the spoke neighborhoods because as much as, you know, a lot of us here on Longboat spend a ton of time in Sarasota and Bradenton, we mm -hmm. are still kind of isolated out here on an island uh, for certain services and things. So, um, uh, you know, it, it, I think it makes sense for us to be somewhat independent, um, but, you know, utilizing all the resources like we already do, frankly, <laughs> you know, um, ITN and obviously Sarasota Memorial Health Healthcare System, all those things. So, um, you know, that's my goal here is to make sure um, we can be, you know, sort of a strong spoke of, of the hub. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who else? Yes, Sally, you need to come off of mute. Thank you, Susie. Uh, I just wanted to say that, uh, thanks Susie for all she's doing on Longboat because as we were studying, trying to, uh, attempting to start a uh, village on Bird Key, uh, one piece that we could not seem to get our arms around was the so socialization piece. And you're providing so many programs that, uh, you know, that, that piece, which was a huge obstacle to us, uh, you have right there. And congratulations to you for doing that. Thank you. Who else? What are your interests or aspirations? Please, Paula. Friendship Center. Good morning. Um, well, it, I've been with Senior Friendship Center for, I just started my 23rd year, and I'm also a 53-year resident of Sarasota. Mm -hmm. So um, I am passionate about collaboration. I also uh, feel that the Friendship Center offers an incredible amount of opportunity for individuals. And sometimes people don't necessarily know it's there. I uh, Part of my focus over these years with the Friendship Center has certainly been assisting families in aging in place. When caregiving becomes an issue, I mean, that's, that's my thing. Um, and so we are very actively doing that. And my hope is to, um, and the other thing is I really promote and believe that people need to look at uh, friends and family as resources and it's just not the professional aspect of caregiving. Um, I'm pretty verbal, so I, I'm gonna try to limit my, my comments other than um, saying, I think this is a great idea. Um, and I think there's the one issue um, is not having duplication. So I think really figuring out, you know, not recreating what is really strong in, in place and uh, bringing that information to the front, uh, forefront for individuals. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, Paula. And for the whole group, for your information right now, the Sarasota Village has a um, fiscal sponsorship agreement with the Friendship Centers. So the village is able to receive um, gifts, uh, tax exempt, uh, tax exempt gifts based on that fiscal sponsorship. So we have a 501c3 through uh, Friendship Centers. We don't have our own, but in the future, it's the aspiration of the group to do that. So thank you. And we will speak much more, uh, Paula, to really learn how we can connect. And for all of you, this is like an introductory con conversation of community members. And we're going to have to get closer together to drill down into how can we really work together. Who else? Please, Linda. Hi, I'm Linda Williams with the Living in Community Network. Little history, 10 years ago, 
we came together because we thought about community and how to help make it happen. We brought in the guest speaker who was well known across the country and we looked at three models. We looked at the shared housing model, the Golden Girls. And so we have lots of resources around how to come together and make arrangements. The other thing is we have a neighborhood model. How do you get to know your neighbors other than waving hi when they drive in and out of the area? And the third one was intentional community where people come together with a common goal and build a community. So we have lots of resources. We've had a meetup for years, but we are not meeting at the moment. <laughs> But we want to get involved and we're very excited about this. So we have neighborhood survey sample, lots of things. And as I listen to where we're going, um, I'd be happy with Jeanette to offer it. And if you have requests, maybe we can help you too. Jeanette, do you want to add anything? Um, no, I think, I hope I'm still, I am hearing. Um, no, I think you, you pretty well covered it. Um, so yes, we're, we're very excited about this prospect. Uh, obviously we've been involved in this type of thing for a long time. And um, I'm also involved with Universal Design Coalition, which can be very helpful in helping advise people on how to modify their homes to be able to actually age in place. So. And one last thing, we have a active meetup that we've been keeping and we have, over 500 people who say they're members. So we wanna be able to support this organization by getting word out also. Thank you. Thank you, Linda and Jeanette. Super. Who else? Hi, um, so again, we're Ellie and Mark Baldwin with Sunway's um, Senior Living Concierge. So. Uh, Sunways is essentially a free service for seniors. Um, we specialize in helping seniors and caregivers um, to just navigate finding care. And a lot of times that is both, sorry for the, the dryer in the background. It's like the longest beep ever. Um, so essentially that is finding care options, both in home and community settings, but just resources for caregivers. That is what we are most passionate about and also for seniors as a whole. So when this concept came to us through Sue, it was interesting because a lot of times Mark and I feel like we're our own village <laughs> of really just getting information and resources to seniors in the community because I think we can all agree like we're lucky locally to have so many resources, but a lot of times people just don't even know that they're there or how to access them. So I think that that's how we can help the most and what we're excited, how we're excited to help is getting the word out and getting the concept out to seniors who want the, want access to it. So, super. Thank you very much. It's exciting. All of this, what I'm hearing is hearing is exciting. Who else? I'll I'll do something. Um, again, my name is Katie Scott. I'm a Jewish Family and Children's Service or JFCS of the Sun Coast. Um, for us, it's um, a misconception because of. Uh, um, when you hear Jewish in our name, people just think you have to be Jewish to either get services from us or um, work for us, which is not the case. So um, we are non-denominational and I am in the aging services department. And I do agree with um, like Mark and Ellie and as well as Paula, you know, just trying to get the information out to everybody. Um, it's difficult because we get some very interesting requests. Um, and um, we try to partner as much as possible. And I agree with Paula on trying not to overlap um, on services. So being specific on, on different areas. Um, but I agree the difficulty of trying to get the word out on what's available out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. Who else? Hi, it's, it's Pam Miller Giacoma from Compass Care Advisors. I know Carol just dropped off a, a video, but one of the um, obstacles that Carol and I found is that um, it very much involves the families of some of these elderly that are not in this state that are very concerned about the safety of their parent or parents 
And so what we have found with doing, we do a, these medical assessments and make sure that they have everything in place that they would need if there's some type of a medical emergency, as well as working with aging safely in place with physical plant changes. But the, it was amazing the few families that we did touch base with, um, and usually it's in times of crisis, the relief that they felt when they knew that there was an organization that they could call on or that their parent or whomever could call on if, they're, if they were in need. And, and I think, again, it's just communication that they didn't know that these things were, were available to them, as well as them feeling that they wanted to maintain their independence, maintain their autonomy, and not rely on these types of services. So I think, again, it's, it goes back to communication, but also having these systems in place so that um, families can be rest assured um, as much as possible that there are a number of people out here now that are actively working to keep people aging in place safely. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Hello, telephone number 302-379-9156. Did you wanna say anything? Hi, it's just Carol. I came off video um, okay. and came back on audio. That's all. Okay. Very good. Just wanted to make sure that um, Thank you. whoever that was was acknowledged and we were connected. Who else? Anyone else? Um, Deborah. Yeah, while well, well, while we're sort of on, um, you know, Pamela's um, information about out of state and connecting with families, I wanted to ask Joel his experience in how that has worked throughout other villages. Since, of course, this is all a new concept to um, to us. Maybe you have a little bit of. Um, additional knowledge you could share and how that might be working with other villages. Absolutely, Sue, thank you. I, and and um, a couple of points uh, that, that, that Pamela brought up as well is just the idea of having trust in the system. People are looking for guidance and help and trust in, in helping navigate what often is a very complex series of situations, whether they be healthcare, or transportation or housing related. Um, and so one of the things that, that I'm working with people across the country is how can we improve the communication and improve the coordination across geographies so that there's also then trust in the system. Now, I just wanna point out what, this is not a franchise. Right. This is not a when I when we're talking about the village concept. This is not a templated organization that we are doing or setting up in Sarasota, and that's both um, that's that's part of the beauty and the opportunity that this is a coming together at a local level about what is possible in that in your community, and the good news, bad news is there are guides, there is no roadmap. So, so it really takes a group of people mobilizing and co-creating together to, to create what makes sense in your community. Back to your specific question, Sue. Um, we have 200 some villages across the country today. Um, that is still only, while that is a, a wonderful um, evolution of villages over about a 20 year period, it is only a drop in the bucket of what is possible. Uh, Deborah has participated in, in events that where I've, I've laid out the possibility of if, we, if, our, if our communities had as many villages as there are Starbucks, that would create the kind of network where that trust is established and where that coordination could really occur. So does it happen today? A little bit, not enough. And it, but it is very much a part of why um, 
a village today in Sarasota that is emerging that can work in coordination with the network and other communities that can work in coordination with other communities throughout Florida where there are emerging villages will we'll create that infrastructure, will create those, those pipes, if you will, for that type of cross-coordination. Mm -hmm. And Sue, also um, to the topic of families out of the region or even within the region of that kind of connection, one of the things that we have been doing a pretty good deep dive on is moving into learning about the different business models of villages so that we are starting with our eyes wide open about what the needs are in the community, what's already here in the community and creating a resource which is sustainable and can move itself into the future. And so a, co a colleague of mine, a friend colleague says, Deborah, I'm not interested in the village but my parents need it a lot. And so I want to join the village so that um, really for my parents, but also I want to know what's there so that I can be a better support to my, my, my parents. So I think that these are some of the things that we want to think about and think through and how, do, how are the relationships built and who's participating and begin to build something that is really um, support for the entire community. Really also our idea is this is a community about aging in place, aging in community, but also that it's intergenerational. The idea isn't that it's just um, the aging older adults, that also there is an intergenerational and interdependence that we are supporting in a very positive way. Other thoughts or comments, questions? Yeah, okay, so at this moment, let's go ahead and move over to um, uh, Sue Firestone, who is going to share a little bit about how we can participate and collaborate together. Thanks for bringing the slides up. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Josephine. It's, it's funny after, um... I took myself off mute. Okay, after after Joel was talking, it is um, true, and part of our conversation originally is that villages are um, as unique to the communities that create them. So there's not, you know, while there is um, maybe maybe a roadmap, but you know, you have to decide sort of what route you're going to take based on your um, community. And I, I did um, really hear a lot about not sort of one, uh, reinventing the wheel and overlapping resources, but we are a community that is really very rich in resources. So Deborah talked a little bit um, initially about the community connections team. And this, uh, this part is really about building the relationships and some of the ways that we can achieve this is by sharing services and our resources. I really, um, I was taking, taking notes as we were going along. I really liked what Linda talked about. Um, one of the things that we're gonna have to do um, as part of our exploratory team is a community survey. And she's talking about having resources of neighborhood survey samples. So these are the kind of ways that a community connections team can help in sharing resources, their knowledge and their expertise. Um, you know, linking us to other potential partners or people that might be interested. All of us have our sort of own network of um, individuals that we know. So there might be others that are interested in keeping in touch with us and knowing what's going on with, with um, us as we're developing the village. Of course, connecting to other organizations or individuals who may want to volunteer. That's another way the community connections team. And then, um, they can come on board. People can come on board as we move forward. It's not all or nothing. You don't have to jump in right now as we're starting. Um, it might be that as we further develop down the road, um, people can come on board as community uh, partners or through the community connections team as, as we gain momentum with this. Then um, next slide, uh, please, Josephine. So the exploratory team is sort of that smaller team, as it says, about six 
collaborative and contributing members who can really lend a little bit more time to help us with developing, further developing it. So it, uh, it would really be the leaders. You'd serve on a subcommittee, you'd serve on the main ex exploratory team. Um, you know, uh, we are gonna be identifying tasks. There has to be um, the ability to be very flexible with this as we're moving forward. We're gonna be creating policies and programs and procedures. And one of the big ones as we start is gonna be that um, community uh, survey that's going to be uh, really, really key. So it's really sort of developing that um, infrastructure um, once we get that community survey so that we know where we're going from here and what the community is looking for. So that's really what that exploratory team is going to be sort of a little more intense, smaller group that's developing the back end and developing the policy and procedure. So the other thing that I, I want everybody to really keep in mind is that this is not a quick process. Um, I'm sure that um, Joe will agree that th this is something that takes um, time and dedication. Most of the time, um, much like age-friendly process, it, it's over the course of a year. Some of them take, well, I would say the average from my own research is that creating a village is taking most communities two to three years. So it's a it's a process. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight. So I, I don't want anybody to um, think that this is something that's going to happen um, super, super quick. And we are going to be creating a um, newsletter. So if people are just sort of interested in keeping up on our progress and where we are, we'll have that option um, for people that just sort of want to be informed. And then again, maybe as you know, they see the momentum or they see the movement, they'll want to come on to be part of the community connections team. So that's sort of where we are, um, you know, with that today. You have anything to add, uh, Deborah, did I miss anything? Or I think it's fabulous. So uh, the piece that uh, Sue just shared about the exploratory team is part of the handout that we're right. sending you. Uh, be a part of it because that's what the invitation is. And here's a list also on that be a part of it um, about skills and qualities of exploratory team members. And if you could go to the next slide, Josephine, team requirements. So we're going to need people because of COVID. We're going to need people to and just business um, activities for folks to have community uh, computer accessibility and have some skills there to actually participate in the meetings, to lead a team, a, a, a committee, or be part of a committee and become personally financially invested in the village. And so, um, next slide, Josephine. Um, the next slide is just the ending. Oh, okay. So uh, let's go back. I'm sorry, we're going to scroll back a little bit. Could you go? Oh, that's okay. okay sorry. Um, nope, that's good. So when you go, when you move into the place where you're looking at being a part of it, that uh, community connections team is for us really like a big bucket. And from that place of anyone saying, I wanna be part of something going forward. Thank you, Josephine. I wanna be interested from an organization point of view. I wanna volunteer. I wanna give uh, time, talent, financial assistance. This is a place where you can, on our post of value, you can go ahead and take it down. Our post uh, event uh, survey, let us know where you'd like to participate because what we are looking for is just people to raise their hand and uh, sort of jump in the, the bucket of yes, I'm part of it. And then the idea is that we'll begin to sort through and we may have smaller groups. For example, um, Emil and um, where is Cynthia? And Cynthia, you are on my screen right next door to each other. Emil and Cynthia, are they both have uh i'm going to say financial expertise 
uh, systems knowledge. And so I'm speaking with them soon about working on this concept of business model so we can begin to have some framework around how the business model might work. And so that may or may not be your place. Your place may be, hey, I'm interested in bird key and I really would like to get this going on bird key or at Susie had to jump off what she said out in Longboat Key. She's got an awesome organization, the Paradise Center. And it's, I think um, it will be for her to jump on board to think about how this work can happen out on integrating into her organization and into the Longboat Key community. So, so this is sort of the direction that we're going in and we're looking for you know, a, a few people, just a small handful of people to join us on the exploratory team, but it is going to be concerted effort to five to 10 hours a week and um, meeting on kind of a regular basis, leading potentially or being part of a team that's happening so that we really create an organization that is well and widely connected. So uh, let me be silent at this moment, based on what Sue has shared and, and what we've said at this point, what kind of questions do you have? Any questions come up for you? Deborah, could I just uh, jump into on the information that you um, sent out with the tasks and, and where we are, that the, the second page of that, mm -hmm. quite a mm -hmm. few um, mm -hmm. links and resources. So you can research on your own. Um, there's, you know, videos, there's stuff about the village to village network. There's information about the California village movement. There's a lot of good resources there. So you can read a little bit about how some of the different villages developed. And um, as I said, they're unique to the community that creates them. Some are more service oriented, some are more social oriented. So um, this really, these links will help help you in reading a little bit more about it on your own and, and um, developing some ideas and um, suggestions. And I, it was really very helpful, um, I know, for me when I came into the, to the project. Mm -hmm. The first link on that page of links is the Patterson Foundation's web page about the Patterson Foundation's initiative supporting the village. Then there's a, like a two and a half minute video, which is a very, very well done video that you, YouTube that you can click on. It was done by the um, uh, California Village Movement and other links to other uh, villages. And we'll probably keep adding or rolling with uh, becoming, having better and better resources on that page. Mm. I, I'll add also that the California state plan for aging has included villages in their state plan for aging. And also the um, village concept will be uh, obviously a big part of our age friendly efforts um, and action plan moving, moving forward into our next five years. And some other communities that are age friendly are also adopting um, village concept into their age friendly plans as well. Very good. Any other thoughts or questions? Uh, Please, I, Sally. I'd like to direct my question uh, to Joel. Uh, <clears throat> Beacon Hill Village was the one that, that got me started on the whole idea <clears throat> of aging at home. And um, I believe, I recall, that they started out very small just on Beacon Hill. And now they have, have expanded and spread to a wide geographic area. Uh, into the Boston suburbs as well. Um, I just wondered if they'd be an interesting example for people to uh, research and look at, uh, because this is the anticipation here in Sarasota is to make it a wide geographic area. But uh, I wondered if they'd have some experiences that would be helpful to this group. Sally, I think there are some wonderful examples throughout uh, the country, in particular, I, and Deborah's and, and Barbara Shear have been on the phone with one of my colleagues in Denver um, that I think would probably be a, an even better model for what you're doing in Sarasota right now. Mm -hmm. to, your, to your point in Boston, um, 
Beacon Hill did start in a very uh, specific uh, geographic area and they did expand out, but there's really been an explosion of many more villages, not the, not the growth of Beacon Hill in particular out to the suburbs. And part of what I'm working on and part of my comments earlier about as many villages as, as, uh, as, as Starbucks is this idea of can we create a lot more intimate villages Right, getting a village started, as Sue pointed out, it's not an easy task. There's some heavy lifting involved. That's part of what we're trying to do here is try to accelerate and make that process a little bit um, smoother. So to your point, I think there are some things to be learned from Beacon Hill, without a doubt. There are also some other villages throughout the country um, that have done some things, particularly over the last five years, that are, uh, I believe, even uh, more relevant to what you all are building in Sarasota. And I'm, I'm happy to help help with that. And Deborah has already picked up that, that mantle and she's running with it. So that's one of the, the, the wonderful things about having this type of group coming together. It, it takes people to actually make it happen. And uh, what I've seen over the last couple months, just to, while I've been getting to know Deborah and Sue and Josephine is just phenomenal. And will only make this process go, go smoother and be a little bit easier. I'm not gonna tell you it's easy, right? It is, it is a process, it is a mobilization of people, um, but the results and, and the process can be really uh, full of joy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. So in the couple of minutes that we have left, what I'd like to um, invite everybody to do is um, um, participate in a chat in the chat. And what I'd like to ask you to do in the chat is put in word or words that will um, that are an expression of as you think about a village, what benefits does that bring to the community? How do you feel about a village operating and, and existing here in the, in, in the community? We're gonna develop a word cloud out of this. If you all know what a word cloud is, it's lots of different words. So if you put, to, so thank you, Mark and Ellie, you put support team. What's gonna happen in the word cloud is team might be over here and support might be over here. So the more you do one word, the more uh, cohesive it'll be. When we send our, um, our uh, post-evaluation survey out also, we'll have that question there, but we'd like to create the word cloud right away and just get going with it. And then we can um, uh, build upon it. So yeah, freedom, connection, healthy collaboration, information, what else? You can duplicate those words if you want. What else? I'm thinking about innovation. Anyone else? More into the chat? Thank you, help, yep. Relationships purpose, awesome, thank you. Family, yes, passion. We have lots of ideas about how this village can be formed and I am very excited about our next steps. When we get the post-evaluation survey with everyone, we're going to start the process of having more in-depth conversations with some of you, all of you that want to have those more in-depth conversations. That's what our, that we're setting our sights in that direction. As I said earlier on the three major tasks, it's really connecting with people who are here in the community. This is not a doing it on our own type of um, an experience. Anything else into the chat? Okay, so it's just a couple of minutes before the top of the hour and I would like to take one last moment to invite anyone to um, share any last thoughts or comments. You're all just beaming with excitement like I am. I really am. I, it's, you know, this, you know, sometimes your work keeps you up at night. This keeps me up at night in a good way, which I'm very excited about. So what we're all about is enhancing the quality of life 
um, of people in our community, people who are aging so that they can age in place. It's neighbor to neighbor, neighbor support. It's um, networking with community organizations that are here. It's intergenerational, it's grassroots. It's us doing this together. So we invite you into this field of, of creating something new and creating that connective tissue that connects us more together and, and really supports our community members in a way that maybe we can't even understand right now. So unless there's anything final, we can go ahead and say thank you and we'll be back in touch. Please fill out the post-evaluation survey. It's key to us. Thank Thanks. you so much, everybody. Thanks for participating. Thank Thanks for participating. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank Bye. you. Guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.